Good morning, everybody. Rachel here, back for some more nature journaling. Woo! Um, now, I'm kind of excited about today, um, just because I'm trying out like a new piece of technology, which I think is gonna be pretty fun. But let me see, where did my stream viewer go? So I've got this little like microscope plugged in. Let me see if I can turn it on. There we go, there it is. Hello, that's my finger. Whoa. <laughs> um, so I think this is gonna be pretty fun because it'll really allow us to do um, some up close looking at some of these little dudes. And I know that the glare is pretty bad, but you know, we'll deal with that. Actually, maybe if I turn off, will it be able to see okay with the ambient light? Oh, maybe so. Well, anyway, this is gonna be fun to play around with. Um, and might allow us to do an activity that I quite like, which is called zoom in, zoom out, in like a very literal sense <laughs> of the phrase, because we're gonna be able to like literally zoom in with a microscope on some dragonfly and damselfly features. So <clears throat> I put in the description, and I don't know, I'm trying to arrange these so that the glare doesn't make them totally unviewable. Well, I'll do my best. Um, I'll just put my little ballpoint pen under this one um, but if you want to journal along with us with with me <laughs> please grab a journal and uh, yeah just uh, enjoy or just watch it's fine because I think we're gonna learn some stuff maybe hopefully um, even if you can't journal along so I'm gonna start like I always do with a uh, the date I'm pretty sure it's May 5th because yesterday was May the 4th be with you May 5th um, I don't even know which week this is of quarantine, but I'm gonna write quarantine week question mark because it's been a long time. <laughs> um, and since the, the focus today is just gonna be dragonflies of Kansas, that's what I'm gonna write down. Um, something to keep in mind as we're looking at these dragonflies today is that uh, they, they definitely will look different when they are alive. So when I am putting down the, the names of these things and stuff, I would encourage you guys, and I will certainly be doing this after I'm not live anymore, um, but I would encourage you to, to Google some of these names so you can really appreciate some of the bright colors that they have when they are alive, because that's, that's pretty stinking cool. Neat. Okay, well, um, let's see. I don't know exactly where to start, but um, maybe what we should do as like a little group is take a peek at these guys. Oh, I set my autofocus off, which is really helpful for, you know, my hand not getting focused on, but maybe less helpful for um, trying to get a close up look of dragonflies. So let me turn on my, oh, it is on autofocus. Cool. Never mind. Boop. Let's uh, see if I can get it to focus. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, focus on the dragonfly that's here. You can do it. Well, I've lost all confidence. <laughs> anyway, um, I picked out a couple of damselflies and maybe that'll be part of what we do today is take a look at some of the differences between dragonflies and damselflies. Um, but this is one of my favorites. It's called an ebony jewel wing. And I know that it says jewel wing in the name. Oh, well, that looked nice. Why don't you just stay focused like that? Um, yeah, it says jewel wing in the name, but I mean, look at this thing. It's really the jewel part is um, its body. I don't know, it's so hard to see it. I'll try to maybe um, get a close-up look of the iridescence, but its body is just beautiful. I think maybe I need to, maybe if I move my camera the right angle. See, it's so hard to see, but you can kind of see on this guy's body right here how iridescent and bright blue it is. Okay, in the light, these guys are absolutely stunning. I know that our in-person in Nature Journal Club has gotten to look at some of these and journal them um, on the riverbanks. So just really stunning little damselflies. And I've got this itty bitty little tiny one, which I honestly just picked because I thought its name was cool. It's called the Aztec Dancer Damselfly. And I think there's a lot of little blue damselflies in Kansas. Um, maybe they're like the little brown birds of dragonfly world. Um, this one I also picked because it had a really cool name and I do want to Google this one to see what it looks like when it's alive because it's called the Firecracker Skimmer Dragonfly. Like, that's so gorgeous. And this is a collection that was um, 
Oh, this isn't actually from Kansas. It's from Arizona. You know what? It's okay. We're going to look at it anyway. <laughs> um, just because it's really cool. Um, but uh, this is donated or on loan to us from Roy Beckenmeyer. Beckenmeyer. So um, really cool dragonfly. I perhaps should have made sure that these were all Kansas <laughs> before I picked them up, but that's okay. Um, I didn't know. I haven't really dug into this collection before. This one's from Texas. This is a yellow-sided skimmer dragonfly, which is gorgeous. I guess little tips on its wings. This one's definitely a Kansas one. That's why I picked it, because I see them outside sometimes. This is the widow skimmer, and the widow skimmer is found right here in Kansas. Look, this was actually collected in our park here, Chisholm Creek Park. So that's pretty cool. And what's the last one? This is a Nebraska one. I wonder if it's, ooh, I accidentally picked out two of them. That's okay. Ooh, this one's cute. Okay, let's pick this one. Um, this is the female, and this one's the male, I guess. That's the difference here. Um, but this is a cherry-faced meadowhawk. And we do have meadowhawks here in Kansas. I'm just uh, not 100% sure which species we have here. So I don't know. This will be a fun little adventure for us, I guess. Maybe I should have looked for Kansas species only. It didn't cross my mind that they could potentially not be Kansas species. Oh well. Um, okay, well, let's see. How are we gonna get started on this? I think what I want to do, yes, Amanda. <laughs> um, I, th I think we should do a comparison maybe between like a damselfly and a dragonfly. So let's look at like our big ones maybe. Um, there's, there's my first choice. I want to do this um, ebony jewel ring. It's really blurry in this corner up here, so I'll maybe stick this little guy right here. Ebony jewel ring, and um, let's see, which dragonfly? This is a, maybe a comparable size dragonfly. Let's try that. Um, let's go with our little widow skimmer, dude. I think that would be effective. Yeah, so I'm going to clear off our little other friends. Boop, 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 boop very carefully for any of my coworkers watching this. Don't worry, I put little index cards in the box so that I can put these guys back in the correct taxonomic order. <laughs> They're not going to be <laughs> thrown around randomly. Um, all right, yeah, so let's get started on these guys and see uh, what we have to look at. I'm gonna scooch my things over a little bit so that they're sharing the screen. And um, yeah, I wanna do a comparison with damselflies and dragonflies. And okay, full disclosure, not an insect person so I have not done any research specifically on what like some of the scientific differences are between these things which means hey we're gonna be maybe in a bit of a similar circumstance with like how, how oh my god I should not talk while I'm writing this is one of the bad parts about using a pen <laughs> damselflies Oh lord, this is starting off great. <laughs> um, okay, so we got dragonflies versus damselflies. If you're into pretty nature journaling, I hope your nature journal ends up looking prettier than mine. Today, I'm just here to study this stuff, so who cares? As you're noticing, I'm using just a ballpoint pen. Um, usually my nature journaling tool of choice, unless I plan on coloring anything, and I'm not going to do that today. So use whatever you're comfortable with, make it as pretty as you want to, but this is what we're up to today, because I'm about that low effort feel on this Tuesday morning. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So dragonflies versus damselflies. There is um, like maybe three characteristics that I do know about ahead of time. So I promise you we will be observing at least three things that are definitely like true ways to tell them apart, as far as I know. Um, <laughs> so so let's, let's uh, take a peek. Um, and maybe I can get you guys to, to help me out with your observational skills here. These artifacts are so tiny. I will hold them up. What are some noticeable differences that you see between the dragonfly and the damselfly? This one, of course, being the dragonfly as a widow skimmer. I know it's hard to see and it's not quite focused, um, but that's all right. Maybe my camera is tilted. Oh, it totally is, that's why. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, let's see. What are some differences that you guys notice? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list out some differences first and then maybe try to make a sketch of each of them that captures those characteristics. While you guys are thinking on these differences, I'm gonna try to adjust my camera so that it's maybe a little bit less blurry. 
would probably help if my uh, tripod was also not uneven. But yeah, go ahead and, and think on it. Can we conclude? If you don't think of anything or we're not feeling interactive today, that's totally fine. I'll, I'll uh, help you, you guys out with some characteristics that I've definitely noticed. But hey, I want to I wanna see what you guys are observing. There, hopefully that helps a little bit. If we need a bit of a clue about something we should be looking for, oops, let me tilt it this way, actually. There we go, nice, 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 nice. Um, let's see, maybe, hey, Zach. Maybe the um, abdomen. There's some differences in the abdomens. There are also some differences in the wings that are hard to tell right now because these are dead. <laughs> um, okay, maybe now we're getting there. Is this gonna be? Oh, there's a level on my thing. I guess I could use that. That's not gonna help us. Okay. Well, I think that the first thing I want to include is um, differences in their abdomen. So one thing I'm noticing, so we've got our, our little damselfly up here as well, and then here's another dragonfly. Um, the damselflies have really, really, really skinny abdomens. So let's let's write that down on my list. Skinny abdomens. Mm -mm. If I can spell today, that would be amazing. I'm already struggling, so we're not very good on hope. Yeah, wing shape is different. And you know what? I I don't know if that's consistent across dragonflies and damselflies, but definitely all of the ones that I picked out today have that wing shape in, in common. Like this little tiny guy right here has really rounded um, tips on the wings. Whereas like all these dragonflies, it's almost like a straight line on the leading edge of the wing. And then it kind of like curves. It's, it's not like an oval, you know what I mean? I don't know, we'll try to capture that. And this might be the sort of thing where we'll need to sketch out the shapes that we're talking about to really make the point. So let's say skinny abdomens. Um, I'm gonna write thick abdomens with two C's because I'm extra like that. Oh, I'm writing it on the wrong, I'm, you know what guys? Maybe I didn't have enough coffee. Okay, um, Lord have mercy. Okay, here we go, here we go. Um, this is the damselfly. Maybe I should like do a little damselfly sketch so that I actually do the right thing. <laughs> Good grief. Oh, big old guy. Okay. Cool. Oh my word, you guys. <laughs> um, hopefully your journaling is going better than mine. Thick abdomens. I'm going to focus on what I'm actually writing and not try to talk the whole time. Um, versus real skinny abdomens. Maybe it would help if I just put them in the order that I'm actually trying to journal them. There we go. <laughs> now it's Rachel proof. So um, skinny abdomens. Wing shape, as Amanda pointed out. And um, how am I going to describe this? I'm going to I'm going to say maybe like more triangular wings, and I'm noticing that the the base of the wing is really thick, and the tip is is a uh, skinny. And I think I just skipped out there. Yeah, I definitely need more coffee. Um, whereas it's like the opposite on these guys, right? Like so, it's really skinny toward the body, but it's really thick toward the outside. So. Um, yeah, let's let's write that um, wings, and I'll I'll just maybe write wings and then draw draw the shapes. I think it'd be easier to draw it than to describe it. So on the dragonfly, it's like thick at the base, and then skinny toward the top. Whereas on the damselfly, I'll put its little body right here. It is. I don't know how I'm. This is weird. <laughs> Um, I guess I'm going the opposite way. It's skinny at the bottom and wide at the top. Okay, yeah, well, that'll work. <laughs> so, um, thin top. I gotta label this so I know what the heck I'm looking at. Thin top, thick 
base. And then it's the opposite. Skinny base. Thick top. Cool. Um, let's see, what else it, do you guys know? And maybe, maybe you already know some of this information, and so that can kind of help you guide your observations. I think it would also help if we were able to look at them up close, because I know that the last trait is something that you would probably not notice unless you had one that was like in front of you. But let's see if I can turn him and get the camera to focus on his head. Do you see his head? So his his body is facing like, you know, the, the belly is here and the back is up here, but the head is tilted. So we're looking at the, the top of this guy's head. If it can autofocus on it correctly. You can do it, I believe in you, camera. Or not, that's fine, okay. Yeah, so, so the eye placement is really weird and different which again, probably not something that you'll be able to see unless you catch something like a damselfly that's um, sitting on a rock or a leaf very close to you and um, it's easier to see. Maybe this is a good time to break out our little camera here on the side. Let me pull out my digital microscope and see if we can look at it up close. Okay, so there, oh yeah, that's way better. Cool, let me focus this little dude. So, Ooh, would my light help or hurt? It hurts, it hurts, it makes it worse, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, so look at this damselfly's head. Oh, this is fun. Okay, we're definitely gonna zoom in on the head um, for part of our journaling exercise. But do you see how the eyes are like out on the side of the head, hammerhead shark style? That is really, really different from a dragonfly. So that was the top of a damselfly's head. Here's our widow skimmer dragonfly. And check that out. Instead of being like, see those, the, the whole head is basically this guy's eye, right? So like there's one eyeball and then his mouth and then there's the other eyeball. So like their, their eyes are just enormous on the dragonflies and they, they are on the top of the head and kind of meet in the middle almost. Whereas with the damselfly, again, let's let's just compare it real quick. This damselfly has hammerhead shark eyes, which is a good thing to have. So remember one of our like basic nature journaling um, prompts is to look at, um, you know, what it might remind you of. So I'm gonna definitely write that in my book. I'm actually trading out my ballpoint pen for like a permanent pen just for funsies because maybe that'll help my brain not be as terrible <laughs> um yeah so let's let's have let's put the eyes or the the head slash eyes and uh attempt to like sketch in this difference real quick in just like a really crude basic way so I'm gonna start with the damselfly since I've already got that and pulled up on our microscope. Um, but yeah, this this is eyes in the side of the head. And I'm gonna write on the damselfly hammerhead shark eyes. Oh my word, I cannot even write words in English today. Hammerhead shark eyes. grief and uh yeah okay there's there's its little his little eyes whereas let's uh switch out our dragonfly boom 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 Ooh, this is so fun look how hairy those legs are um okay there's there's our head and we're looking at these heads from the same direction um i'm guessing that when when roy uh was pinning these or, or drawing them out or whichever method he used, he did that on purpose so that we could see those characteristics. Um, yeah, so that's the damselfly's head, eye, and this is basically all eyes. I'm having to look at my computer screen here so I can see 
the eye up close. And then uh, it's got this big old mouth. And then uh, I guess the back of his head. What what does this remind me of? What does this remind me of? Because um, I had hammerhead shark for the dra damselflies. What <laughs> what does this remind me of for the the dragonfly? Um, open to suggestions. I guess um, it kind of reminds me of an aviator helmet. You know, where they've got like the goggles on the the top of the head. <laughs> um, aviator helmet I'm just gonna write that in there and you know what you guys come up with I would love to hear your comparisons because I think that's like one of the secret keys to making fun um, engaging and memorable nature journal entries so that when you come back to this you're like oh yeah I know exactly what I was talking about and I think it's also really helpful because you're not gonna forget it as easily like if you wrote down the scientific term like I love scientific words and I love learning new scientific words um, but I think it's really, really useful to have really informal ways of recognizing things so that you um, can remember it. Oh, yeah, Amanda says clover. That's, that's an interesting way to look at it. And I see exactly what you mean because it's almost like little lobes that meet in the middle like a clover. Ooh, that's a good one. I didn't even think of that at all. Like that is forcing me to look at this in a totally different way. Huh. That's cool. Okay, I dig it. <laughs> oh, he's totally got a little leg up that's over the eyeball. That's why it looks weird. Fun. Okay, so so that's our main comparisons. I'm gonna get rid of our little microscope here, and we'll we'll zoom in again on these guys. I promise. But for now, um, what are some other, if you have them, observations that you want to make between them? Those are the three things that I really wanted to cover because I know for sure that those are characteristics that are consistent across them um, or that I think are consistent across them. There's some other traits, like when they're alive, um, you'll notice that dragonflies will hold their wings out. So when they are at, at rest, their wings are like, uh, they're like spread out like this if that makes sense. Whereas when, when these guys, the damselflies are at rest, their wings are folded up typically, but that's not always true. I, I think that there's a group called the spread winged dragon, or sorry, damselflies, is that right? I don't know, but they, they hold their wings out. So maybe all of the observations we're making aren't necessarily consistent, but you know, it can at least help us out. <laughs> I think that the eyes might be. But again, like, I don't know. I'm not an insect person. We're just doing our best out here today. <laughs> if uh, Jim Mason tunes in, maybe he will correct us or Alicia Oberg or something. So those, those are my observations. Again, if there's anything else you guys want to let me know that you're noticing between them, um, we can talk about those and look at them up close. But I guess after that, I think what I want to do now is just sketch out these guys um, as like a big diagram, if that makes sense. So while you're kind of making some observations and looking at these guys, um, I'm going to attempt to organize this disaster that I made already. And I'll just let you guys kind of look. And if you want me to, you know, plug any traits into the mic for a scope, we can totally do that. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> this is fun. I, uh, I enjoy learning by looking. And I think that's true for a lot of people, especially like um, people who are more mechanical or tactile learners. Um, you know, even if you can't like touch a dragonfly or whatever, the act of writing it down is triggering some like muscle memory things in your brain that really helps, I think, to 
organize it for people who are more tactile. So if you have any tactile learners at home um, that are struggling because they're, they're out of school, um, suggest something like a nature journal entry. You can journal engineering and all, all kinds of things too. So very, very useful as a study tool. I, I think I've said this before in my journaling stuff, but when I was in college, I basically grabbed a sketchbook and did a lot of my biology classwork by writing it down and journaling it. I just found it to be a really useful exercise. Okay, <laughs> so now that looks a little bit more fun and it's easier to see what's going on. I very crudely made my lines thicker in sort of a sketchy style by just making a bunch of lines on it because I don't have any other markers with me today. I just have these two pens, but there we go. Okay, well, since I'm not seeing any other like observations and comments that we want to look at, let's Let's do some damselfly and dragonfly stuff up close. So I, I'm gonna stick with these two just because I know for sure that they are Kansas species that you will find if you go outside to any sort of you know area with water and um, plants and, and stuff. So let's look at them up close. Let's maybe choose our dragonfly first because that's how it is in my journal. <laughs> and it's so small, I wish, maybe. maybe. No, never mind. That's a terrible idea. I was going to say we could attempt to uh, zoom in on it, but that would make it hard to see the journal entry. Uh, maybe we could do that anyway. Well, we'll do it. Who cares? Da, 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 da. There. How's that? <laughs> I just kind of changed the screen. That'll work. All right. There's our dragonfly. Let's attempt to journal it, even though you guys probably can't see it super well. Um, I've got some lighting on this that I'm using to try and make it easier to see, but I know that the glare is kind of difficult. I could take it out of the, yeah, let's do that, because that way it'll be easier to see on the sheet too. I'm gonna be very, very gentle while I take this out of the package. Um, and these are all, you know, very well documented and organized little guys. I'm trying very hard not to bend the card because I know that these guys can um, break. They are very brittle. So let's get him out. Her. No, it's a him. It's a him. And keep that in mind because some dragonflies, the species, can look a little bit different um, when they're male versus female. So that, that can affect your documentation. And so since we happen to know the sex of these guys, let's make sure we write that down when we do our little entries. So ooh, this is a gorgeous dragonfly. Let me bring him up to the camera now that we've got him out of his box. Um, Gosh, and I wish that it was easier to see. Because in person, it's kind of easy to see just how like iridescent and shiny this is. It's kind of crazy, honestly. But what a beautiful little dragonfly. So let's try to draw him. Um, I will point out a couple of things that I'm seeing in person that maybe aren't seen as easily at home because um, I think it's the white balance. It's, you know, against a white card, and so the camera is having trouble seeing the dark parts. But this wing comes out really flat right here and then goes up like this. Oh, my gosh. Nicole just texted me and said I should get the pinned ones out. Okay, but, like, these are pretty stinking cool. I liked that they were so well organized. Ugh. I mean, I guess I could get a pinned one out. Fine, I'll get a pinned one out later, but can we look at this first? Dang it, now I want to get a pinned dragonfly out. Will you guys forgive me if I go real quick to get a pinned dragonfly out of the closet right next to me? Cool, I'm at the front desk right now. <laughs> but, you know, feel free to journal. Go ahead real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do as Nicole wishes and go fetch a pinned dragonfly. <laughs>
will say that this is worth it because I absolutely think it is. Um, let me scoot these little guys over. I think um, what's beneficial about having, well, first of all, we never use these cool little cards, um, but I think it's, oh, forgot he was out. Oh dear, gentle, gentle, gentle. Boop, 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 boop. There you go, buddy. Okay, um, we can't really stick the little ones or the, the ones that are out under uh, the microscope. Here, let me scooch these down for you guys. But these are really cool. Look at them. So like I know Nicole was hoping or saying that we should um, get these guys out so we could look at the wing venation up close. I don't know that I can really, I'm gonna be very careful because this wing is underneath the other one. There we go. Whew, okay. I don't know that, um, there we are. The microscope will really pick up these guys because they are so like out there. <laughs> but um, we can certainly try that. Now this widow skimmer is not, that we were looking at earlier, is not the same dragonfly that um, I've got in this box. This one in the box is called a pied skimmer. I have no idea what the difference is, um, except maybe size and some other like shapes like that, but um, that's what that animal is. And um, this is actually an ebony jewel wing right here, which is this little dragonfly that we were looking at just a minute ago. So I might put them up here for us to look at on our screen. Ooh, fun. Okay, this worked out really well, you guys. I'm a little bit shook. <laughs> so like, like before, I do have the damselflies on this side and the dragonflies on this side. Um, so our dragonflies and I've got our dragonfly up here and our ebony jewel wing damselfly right here. Ooh, okay. This is, this is cool. Um, and notice already that like, okay, some of our characteristics are looking a bit wishy-washy now that we're seeing like the Halloween pennant here, which I know for a fact is at least one GPNC staff person's favorite dragonfly. Um, it might even be two people's favorite dragonfly. <laughs> uh, they're a little prairie dragonfly. But um, <clears throat> at any rate, their abdomen is quite skinny. But you'll notice just like how thick it is compared to those damselflies. So that is a pretty significant difference. <clears throat> and again, we're able to see that, you know, some of the traits that we were looking at before are at least somewhat true with these guys as well, whereas these are much more rounded at the tip. And uh, these tend, and very skinny at the base, whereas these tend to be very wide at the base. And maybe that's to do with the way that they fly or something. Maybe somebody can comment and let us know if that's true. <laughs> Nicole says she loves me. Thanks. I um, love you too, even though you make my work harder. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So that's fun. Um, <clears throat> let's, Let's, let's look at these guys, I guess. Let's look at some dragonflies. So I'm gonna switch back to my ballpoint pen because I am not about to use that big permanent one. And I might need to change my page here at some point to look up more closely. Um, but a really fun activity that I think would be useful for this is called zoom in, zoom out, where you know we kind of try to draw the big picture of the animal. And then we pick some traits that are quite small um, that we really want to focus in on in order to accurately journal like parts of the animal that, that aren't noticeable up close. And since we've got our microscope thing over here, I think that would be really cool to do. Um, <clears throat> I know my nerdy naturalist coworkers really wanted us to look at wing venation. I, I, I don't know that any of you at home really want to draw a bunch of veins on wings, but we will certainly look at them. <laughs> okay, so let's start with um, our dragonflies. And I think what's kind of cool is that we, we do have these different, like, okay, this one's all flattened out. This one's all flattened out. These guys are all spread out. So let's, let's do both of those different shapes in our journal real quick. And I'm not going to make these, like, very detailed because I'm just trying to get, like, the big picture of these guys. Um, so I'm going to start off with just kind of like the overall shape of the dragonfly's body. Boo, 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 boo. Here we go. 
and we're gonna draw its abdomen. I remember I said at one point, and I know people are tuning in and out, and that's obviously just fine, but in case you missed me saying this before, um, this one is identified as a male, and so we should definitely make a note of that. So that in case the characteristics are specific to that particular sex, we will know. Um, <clears throat> let's see, we've got one pair of wings attaching here and one pair of wings attaching there. I know it's a little bit blurry, but I think that's just because of the way that this camera is set up. So terribly sorry. Also, I think it's really focused on the dragonflies, which are at a slightly different level than the drawings, but you get the idea. So since this side of the wing is so like straight, I'm just gonna kind of put in the shape of the wings right there. Should have given myself more space, but <clears throat> hindsight is 2020. And then it kind of curves around here. And I guess the base of the wing comes all the way out over here, doesn't it? So let's mark that in. And uh, this isn't like a super proportionately accurate dragonfly, but it gets the idea across. Cool. Now, sometimes these like weird little colors and shapes in the wing can be really important. I'm gonna go ahead and like put in a couple of bent legs. I know it's maybe hard for you guys to see where those legs are from your perspective. I'm gonna put in our clover <laughs> or um, what did I say, aviator helmet? I think I like clover better though because <laughs> it helps me guide like what I'm drawing eyeballs in there. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's say Here's, here's this wing shape right here, or this coloration. I'm gonna kinda just scribble in a hint of some darker colors here. <clears throat> and then this little tip right there, oop, you're not able to see that, so sorry guys. Let's move this guy over here. Then that little tip on the wing maybe is a little bit important, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that little cell that's colored right there. Cool, and there's our dragonfly. Um, I'm gonna add some segments on the tail because maybe that's important. I don't know, probably. But it's also probably just like an insect thing because insects are like that. <laughs> okay, nice. There's our dragonfly, very crude. Um, this is a widow skimmer. Dragonfly. Um, I'm not sure if Lindsay has posted this yet, but we did <laughs> decide this week to celebrate Bug Week that we are going to do um, <laughs> a, oh, what did we decide to call it? Oh, a bug off. Um, and we're gonna be having a competition with naturalists to uh, argue for the best, like a debate to argue for the best insect. <laughs> and somebody is doing dragonflies. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that presentation and hopefully we will learn quite a bit about dragonflies from that person's presentation. I'm a little scared because I think my insect is gonna lose, but it's not my fault. Um, I'm sure it's just because the other bugs are very cool. <laughs> All right, so here's, I'm drawing the ebony jewel wing that's up here as like a contrast to the sky. So, I'm trying to make sure that while I do this, I'm really keeping in mind the characteristics we listed first in our journal, which are totally covered up by our widow skimmer, but you know, the skinny um, abdomens and the hammerhead shark eyes and all that kind of stuff. Boom, beautiful. And then the wings, let's, let's go ahead and add her little legs in. Um, so it says that these are male and female and maybe one of my bug people can, oops, oh dear. Maybe one of our bug people can correct me, but um, I, I'm i gonna guess because of the order of that designation, I know you can't see it, oops, my bad. Very gentle scooting, um, that this is the male and that's the female, but I could be wrong. But the difference is that one of these has a black, or sorry, a white spot in the middle of the wing. Can you see that? So yeah, this one has a white spot. Let's cover up those guys down there so maybe, it, maybe it'll focus on us. You can do it, just focus on this thing, please. Ah, well, you can see the white spot for sure, even though it's not focused on it. You can maybe also see a little bit of the like 
iridescent coloration on this abdomen on the female. Hard to see. I wish it was focusing better. It's hard. Um, at any rate, I'm going to assume that that's a female without a black spot until somebody corrects me and tells me otherwise. <laughs> and and uh, actually, I should probably, before I write it down in my journal, make sure that that's actually correct information. Um, yeah, it's a, it's really cool, Amanda, that they eat mosquitoes. Like, they, they are pretty good at it, too. I'm sure somebody will talk about this on Friday night, or, or wait, Thursday night, whenever we're doing our bug off. I think it's Thursday night. Um, but they have something crazy like a 95% success rate at capturing insects. So, like, once a, a dragonfly kind of sets its sights on a mosquito, it almost always catches them like they're just so good at calculating airspeed and distance and um you know the the flight path of the mosquito and predicting that oh thank you somebody who is logged into the gpnc account said that they have a white spot if they are female according to the bug guide okay cool so this is um not reflecting the order that they are in the the package and it's just indicating that they're both present. So the females have a white spot, the males do not. Thank you. I think that's probably Nicole. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> so I'm going to color in this whole wing because it's beautiful like that. And then we're going to add in some legs. And very important note that all of my bug friends will appreciate me pointing out is that their legs do come from their abdomen. Or Oh my word, their thorax, their their like, you know, body, not their abdomen. So that's also important to keep in mind if you're accurately drawing spiders, which although are not insects, their their legs also do come from their their abdomen. So it's accurate to draw a spider with its little, you know, big old abdomen. All the legs come off from that one. It's definitely a pet a pet peeve of ours around Halloween. <laughs> Seeing people draw or sell inaccurate spiders. Like, come on, it's not that hard. Be accurate. Okay, got our jewel wing. I'm going to write down its name, Ebony Jewel Wing. And because we know that the female has the white spot, we're going to write down this one as the male. Beautiful. Cool. So let's do the spread out wings as well, and we'll do that again kind of quickly here. Um, I'm going to draw the pied skimmer because it's very similar, and then maybe we'll do the ebony jewel wing female on the other one, because this one has, it's very hard to see, it's quite faded, but um, it does have a very faint white spot on the wing, and we can look at that in a second, maybe up close, but yeah, okay, we'll do like a, here's our skimmer, I'm going to give it a head, there's your head, congratulations, it sure is a head, with our clover eyes. And let's see, the wings come from actually kind of far back, like back here and back here. And then we're going to draw these guys straight out. And then they kind of dip back a little bit. And the wings go quite far, don't they? There we go. Wide base, smaller tip. Um, and, you know, when we're nature journaling, we're not really trying to, like, paint a super accurate picture of... Um, like a, like a realistic like a uh, painting you know like we're not we're not here trying to be uh, necessarily I mean you can if you want to um, but we're not trying to be what is it called scientific illustrators or something where we're doing a, a perfectly accurate image of it so as long as you are focusing on the features that are the most important in your sketches that's that's really what this is about so focus on those features Try to make sure you're getting that accurately. Like, this is not what a dragonfly head looks like, but I definitely drew the eyes looking correct, and that's, you know, that's what matters. So just do your best. It doesn't matter. We don't have to be an artist. We just might become one accidentally. And uh, that's my Bob Ross moment of the day. Okay, and then we got our little abdomen, which doesn't really go very far. So this one, pew, 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 is gonna have some little spots on its wings too. And I'm gonna make sure I um, label this guy as being a different species than the last one, just in case. Not that this is, you know, super, super accurate anyway, but we're gonna say a pied skimmer. 
dragonfly. And I'm not going to finish the other side of the wings because I think I know about uh, <laughs> what, uh, like it's it's going to be symmetrical. So I'm not like too concerned about looking at this in the future and being like, well, that's not finished. Okay, and then we got our little uh, jewel wing. And these guys are are so long. I'm going to give myself more space by making the head kind of tiny. Whoop. There's its body. Oh, I almost made that like too big. And again, I'm not trying to make a super accurate head, but I am going to make sure I get the hammerhead shark eyes. I know it's hard to see because it's so stinking small, but that's the best I can do. And then I'm going to whoop, give it a really long tail. That's accurate enough. Really long abdomen. I say tail. Abdomen would be the correct word for it. Um, and then let's see the again. You know what is I don't I didn't really notice this until I started sketching these out But look how far back these wings actually start like if I hold this guy up to the camera Oh dear Look how far back the wings start. This is terrible. Can you not focus on oh my gosh it worked Look how far back those wings go it's like at the very, 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 very back of the thorax and uh, like almost right where the abdomen starts. That's so cool. So I'm gonna make sure that I get that in my little entry here. And now that you guys have that beautiful up close picture, you can pause that part of the video to finish your sketch. Hey. <laughs> so let's make sure we start it way the heck on the back of this animal's body. Um, I guess these guys kind of go back, but maybe a little bit out in the front. And then they're round at the top and very triangular at the back. There we go, that's one wing. And then the other wing starts right behind it. And we're gonna follow the curve of that last back portion of the wing. And I'm gonna look at the shape in between, the space in between the tail and the wing to kind of figure out how to fit this in like that. Beautiful. It's, that's, this is why I love nature journaling. Like I never really noticed how far back on their body their wings go. I've seen some fun videos about um, the, the musculature in dragonfly and damselfly wings and how that's so much different from other insects. Um, I hope I'm not like giving anything away for a presentation later this week, but um, I know that their wing muscles are individually attached to their wings. So that means um, they can independently control each of them, whereas like most bugs, it's like they, they kind of go and, and the muscles attach to the entire exoskeleton. So when their like muscles are flexing, it just kind of by proxy makes the wings move, whereas these are like actually attached like a seesaw to the, the wing itself, which is pretty stinking cool. Cool. So those were our damselfly wings. Um, my damselfly is looking a little funky, but that's okay. It's as accurate as I could make it. Cool. And this is a female, so I'm going to give it a little white spot. And it's actually on both of the wings. Okay, so now I think we're ready to maybe zoom in on some of these features and really look at them up close. And since there's like 10 million cool things we could look at under our microscope with these guys, I want to know from you, um, what are, what are some of the features that you would like to look at up close? I Some of the ideas that I have are the head. Again, we could try to do like a, a much more detailed, accurate sketch of the head. Um, another thought I had was uh, the wings. So like on both of these guys, this one right here, and then the ebony jewel wing. Hey, Erica, what's up? Um, we noticed that there's like little spots of color on there. I'm curious to see up close whether Doubting the pied skimmer ID. Oh my gosh, Nicole's commenting on this thing saying, I don't think somebody identified that dragonfly correctly. <laughs> Dude, Erica, I figured out how to hook up this microscope we had up in the closet to the computer so we can get like on the nature journaling stuff. Yeah, like freaking up close details. Like check this out. I'm going to put this little guy into the microscope. Um, let me plug in the microscope. Boom. Check that out. Oh, that's cool. I know. Isn't it awesome? Look at that. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, let's look at his little eyeball. <laughs> I could totally make that bigger, too, if I wanted to. Wow. 
that's cool. Look at you can see this the the um like the cells on the yeah. yeah the fur and the little cells on the eyeball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. This that is, is so fun. Crazy. I'm leaving this setting up on the um we'll software. Demo. Yeah, we're having oh, fun. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm waiting to see what people want me to zoom in on. Amanda says she really appreciates all these awesome live feeds. Aw, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and because Nicole doubts our pied skimmer, I'm going to put pied skimmer in quotation marks on my journal entry. But OK, yeah, so what do you guys want to look at with these dragonflies? Um, just for fun, I've already got this guy pulled out. Um, I, while you're thinking about it, I will attempt to put one of our uh, pinned dragonflies under the microscope. I'm gonna be so, 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 so gentle because I'm really concerned about harming this specimen. What? Oh yeah, no, go for it, you're fine. Do what you gotta do, people understand. Mouth parts, that's a good idea. I really appreciate your bug expert input on this, Nicole, because I'm not a bug person. I'm just having fun. God, look at those wings. So I might be able to, what I've learned is I might be able, if I'm very, very careful, to show you guys some of these parts. Um, but I'm really going to have to focus my attention on the specimen and not harming it. So I'm not going to be able to actually journal it. Maybe I would be able to take a screenshot of it though, or a snapshot of a, a feature. Man, this lighting is terrible. I wonder if it would be better. Oh my gosh, I just turned it to the side. Hang on, let me try something. I just turned this sucker to the side and like, look at, look at these feet. Where, where is it? There it is. Oh, oh, look at its body. Look at those legs. Look how hairy they are. Gosh, this is so cool. Um, again, I'm not going to be able to journal this stuff, but we can sure get some stuff. Oh, we want to look at the wings a bit more. Yes, you know what? I'm going to see if I can find um, a little styrofoam block or something so that I can safely pin this insect down and I'm not trying to hold it and it's not as shaky. I'll be right back, you guys. I think that there's one up in the closet. some of those little like magic eraser type foam blocks. So maybe I'll be able to pin this in. Ooh, I'm gonna, excuse me while I adjust this microscope. Ooh, okay, I think that's gonna work. I'm gonna be very, 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 very careful. The last thing I wanna do is harm this awesome specimen. Oh, that's fun. Would you guys like me to zoom out a bit more? Here, let me try this. Um, there we go. Oh my gosh, is that fun? This is so cool. Um, for my fellow staff members, AKA uh, Nicole et al., I did uh, save the software for the microscope to the, the task bar, so it's just like on the computer if you guys need to use it for or want to use it for anything else. Gosh, look at those wings. So this, ooh, I did not notice this little spot from far out, but look, one of the cells, or is it two of the cells on this wing are colored in. That's fun. Oh, no, oops, it's okay, nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Erica was uh, trying to ask me a question and uh, microscope fell. Fortunately, it did not harm the specimen. Yeah, it's like a suction cup yeah, attachment, which is weird, so um, yeah. Oh, look at that pin. Look at those wings. I know, isn't that so fun? Wow. <laughs> so fun. Um, okay, this is fun. Let's just make this the whole screen because I ain't trying to uh, show you guys the journal when you could be looking at these really cool wings. 
there's some really fun patterns in this venation. Gosh, this is so cool. I love like the little like iridescent. It, it reminds me of like a bubble. Yeah. You know, like these little like colors. It's kind of hard to see unless I like maybe turn it a certain way, but it's in in real life from this angle from where I am it looks like pink and blue and green and stuff you see oh, that Erica yeah. <laughs> that's so cool anyway I, I think I forgot to mention this is the American ruby spot damsel fly so that's what this little species is for your journal entries oh is today all dragonfly yeah you bet Let's turn the light back on. I was hoping that the light would make it better, but. This is all my question. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so, beautiful little specimen. I'm again gonna kind of show you guys these wings. Since that was specifically requested. And you know, as you're looking, feel free to screenshot this for your own journal entries later. Gosh, it's so, so cool. There's so many little cells. And I think that those veins, like, are they active and pumping blood or are they just structural? Is it how the wings unfold? I think it's how they pump them full of fluid to like expand the wings. But I don't know if they dry up and like solidify after that or what. Hmm. I'm, I'm thinking of like, you know, when they emerge from their juvenile state, they will um, have to pump them full of fluid to expand them. And I'm trying to see if that section helps to see a little bit better. Very, very cool. So hairy. Let's look at one of the other little dudes. I'm going to pull up a dragonfly versus a damselfly. Look at those legs. Man, I love. It's like so evenly spaced, the hairs on the legs. That's just so cool. Okay, so I guess we're gonna treat this last bit here as a, you know, future additions to our journal entry sort of thing. Cause I'm not gonna try and journal, and I'm not gonna take the time to like, let you guys really journal right now maybe, but um, you can come back to this video at any time and really see, ooh, okay, okay, I'm here for this. Look. I, I am interested in looking at how those wings are attached to the body. Okay, let me get this positioned just right. And let's zoom in. It's so hard to tell what's going on. But man, look at that. So this is the Halloween pennant. And I'm also noticing, okay, I'm gonna scoot it down just a little bit because I want you to see this like furry collar this animal has behind its eyes. So there's its head, right? Look at this little furry collar it's got. I'm gonna see if I can um, change the brightness settings or the white balance. Oh, that's much better. There we go. And I will apologize for not doing this sooner. I just did not play with the settings on this microscope beforehand. But I'm going to turn up the brightness quite a bit and then a little bit on the contrast too so that it's a bit easier for us to see some of these settings. There we go. Gosh, that's so much better. Look how furry this Halloween pennant is. Let's go back over to these wings and see if we can take a look at how they attach to the body. Oh my gosh, this is so cool, you guys. I like how our nature journaling session has turned into Rachel geeks out about up close dragonfly views. <laughs> um, having looked at this, um, we will go look at the wings as well. A little bit here so that's that's a, a close-up view that you were able to peek at oh let's look at the end of the abdomen let's look at the end of the tail that's fun what is that structure 
I don't really know for sure. Something for me to look into, maybe. Their reproductive organs are up by their, their body, so that's not what this is. It may just be a clasper, though, to help them hang on when they're mating. Okay, let's look at the wings. And I'm gonna attempt to move my microscope up a bit further so that we can see more of the structure, because this dragonfly is so much larger than the damselfly we were looking at before. Excuse me while I attempt to reset up. Nice, okay, now we just gotta focus it. Cool, so the Halloween pennant's wings. Here's the base. And we're looking at the bottom wings. Look at the, the hooks on the edges of the wings. Oh, what? What do you mean the hooks on the edges of the wings? Like, at the, at the base of it right here? There's a huge delay between you being able to see your comments and you seeing what I'm saying. I'm not 100% sure what you're talking about, Nicole, but please do like a crude sketch for us and uh, post it. <laughs> Show us your nature journal entry. It is harder to see some of the detail on the wings um, in a lifelike way because of the brightness settings, but I think we're able to still see anyway. Are you talking about the leading edge of the wing? Because look, there's some weird structure on the leading edge of the wing. And by the, the leading edge, I mean like, you know, when they're flying forward. Ooh, why is that red? Look at that, it's pink. Why, why is it pink? I don't know, but that's cool. It seems like a lot of these dragonflies have these little marked um, cells. Maybe there's even a word for it. Oh, the bumps on the leading edge of the wing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's 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 take a peek. I guess. Is there a special word? I'm writing this question in my journal. Is there a special word for the little colored cell on the leading edge of the wing? And obviously it's both in the damselflies and the dragonflies because we've seen it on both of those uh, members of the group. Is there a name for the cell of color? I wonder if it's the same cell or if it's like a different cell each time, you know what I mean? Okay, but Nicole wants us to look at the little like hooks or bumps on the edge of the wing. So let's see if there's one spot that's a little bit like more obvious than the others. Let's just do here, that looks fine. I'm gonna move the microscope down closer and then refocus it to see if maybe we can look at that feature. What is that? What is happening? Huh, that's weird. I wonder what that is and what it's for. Maybe it's a, uh, an aerodynamics thing. Every once in a while there's like a more obvious like big one. Huh. That is so interesting. Gosh, look at those hairs. We are so close to the dragonfly right now. Ooh. Um, just so you know, the hairs you're seeing on the left side are from the leg underneath it, not the wing of the dragonfly. In fact, I might turn this little fellow around and maybe we can look at it from a slightly different angle that would allow us to see some of those features. Oh, look at that. Okay. Maybe, maybe before we like end our journaling stream with some really fun things to 
journal, um, what we can do is take a look at the mouth and the face. Where did the face go? There it is. And some of the legs. Oh my gosh, are those antennae? Okay, those must be the antennae. So they do have antennae. They're really small. I know in my journal entry, I had kind of drawn a, a couple of hairs, that I, what, what I thought was hairs that seemed to be sticking out. Um, evidently, those were actually the antennae of the animal. And there's a close-up of our clover shape, Amanda. Pterostigma. Ooh, that's fun. New word. Me writing in my journal is making the insect shake. <laughs> okay, that's so cool. So let me let me kind of zoom in, kind of scale down. There's all the hairs on the mouth, the the antennae, the like cells on the eyeball, which are so stinking cool. And then those hairs behind the eyes as well. That's wild. I'm going to tilt this little guy very, very carefully to see if I can do this without harming the specimen. No, I cannot show you the mouth parts very easily, unless I'm probably physically holding it. So we'll, we'll try one more time to show you the mouth parts. Thanks for bearing with me. Wow, dragonfly mouths are very, very strange. I'm gonna have to hold this so it's not going to be steady. But it's just a big lip. They, they have these weird extendable mouths that are kind of held underneath their head. So really to see the mouth parts in action, I think you're gonna have to watch a video of them feeding. Kind of a weaponized lip, I think. Unless that's just the, the nymphs that I'm talking about. How cool is that? Okay, so now that we've looked at the dragonfly head, um, the last thing I wanna do is pull out one of our damselflies so we can look at a damselfly head up close because that was really cool. And uh, I'm gonna get our ruby spot back up because I think it'll be easier to see the features on this body. I think you know. Oh great, there's our little damselfly head. Look, it's cute. Okay, we're gonna focus in on it. This is our ruby spot. And uh, yeah, it's way easier to see just how hammerhead-like this head is. It's kind of cocked to the side. So I'm gonna also tilt our uh, microscope so we can see it from straight down. Cute little booger. Look how cute. These guys, I don't know, something about the way that their heads are looks just adorable. He's looking like up toward the camera at the moment. Let me try something else here. Oh, that's fun. So there's our ruby spot. Very, very different eyes on these guys. Oh, there's somebody who's uh, peeking in the window. Sorry, we're closed still. Very hairy mouths. And uh, carefully tilting it. Let's see if we can find any antennae on this guy. Just for fun. Yeah, there it is. There's the antenna. Um, let's tilt it again this way so that maybe we can see both of them. I'm having to be very, very careful and watch the specimen to make sure I don't bump it on anything. But yeah, you can see those little spots poking out right like between the eyeballs and the mouth. Check out the ocelli. I have to use my free hand to hold. The little spots in between the eyes. What? What do you mean the spots between the eyes? Oh, like right square in the middle? What? That's cool. Huh. 
it's amazing how much color there is on this guy. And I, I should, you know, point out again that these colors, a lot of the ones on the body at least, are, are really iridescent. So under different angles and different lighting conditions, the, the color pops in different ways and different colors become apparent. Like um, from, from my angle, because I'm sitting away from the direct light, it's reflecting back at me this really metallic, like beautiful coppery color. That's my ballpoint pen tip right there on the abdomen. Just, just cool. Very, very cool. Okay, guys, well, um, since this is basically uh, Rachel geeking out about dragonflies under a microscope, is there anything else you would like to see before I go ahead and stop the stream and, and uh, let you guys go get to journaling? And if you do end up journaling some more of these features that we've been looking at up close, using our little zoom in, zoom out sort of methodology, um, I hope that you will post them. You can put them in a comment here, or um, we do have a Nature Journal Club Facebook group where you can post your images. It's a, a fairly small group, and we're trying to become a little bit more active, especially during all this craziness. But you know, check that out, and and hope to post your pictures there. Can we see the wings again? Sorry, just tuning in. Wow, just zoom. But rewind, Anna. Just rewind. No, it's okay. We can do that. Um, I do want to see uh, the way that these wings attach to the ruby spot, the skimmer, to see if it's any different from the dragonfly. And this this specimen again is at a bit of an angle. The way it's preserved. Let me see if I can move it. There. So that's pretty neat. Check it out, man, that's so cool. Turn it the other way and see if that lets us see anything different. The pin is right in the way, but yeah. Very cool. And now it's really clear, you know how I, I pointed out how um, far back the wings attached? Really, it's, it's showing this is showing me that it's it's a very triangular abdomen and that it's almost on a completely different plane as in like a p-l-a-n-e plane and there's these really big panels on the front of the, the sorry the thorax i keep saying abdomen as if it means thorax um but yeah there's just like really long plane on my ballpoint pen again the abdomen right here i know it looks like i'm almost touching it but this is like a whole centimeter above the dragonfly um but right there and then like at the very back boop, 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 there's a whole different plane that's facing the other direction and going down and so the second pair of wings is not only behind it but a little further down as well which is kind of cool yeah okay cool and then i'll just do like another little like a uh, wing tour here real quick before we have to call it quits. Beautiful wings, and I love the little splash of color at the end, which does not look, oh, that was the Halloween pendant that had the pink one, but there, there is that little spot, the pterostigma, as Nicole found out for us. Um, yeah, I wonder if that serves a function, but very, very cool. The brightness is up again so that I, uh, could see the body features, which is making it harder to see the wings, but that's okay. That line is from the card underneath the pinned insect, so that's not part of the, the wing itself. Look at the fun lines, like um, these curves in the wings, in the venation, very fun. Cool guys, well thank you for tuning in. Um, I guess that's all I have today, um, but I hope that you will go and journal some of these features that we saw on these dragonflies because they're pretty stinking cool and uh, had a lot of really fun details that we were able to look at that are normally not as fun or wait not as visible <laughs> for us to see so um, yeah I, I hope that you're able to add some of these features to your journal entries and I'm looking forward to seeing if you guys come up with anything 
in your journal entries. Uh, yeah, this is, this is pretty neat. But that's all I have. So uh, I'm going to say thanks and uh, farewell. Stay safe, and uh, I'll see you again on Thursday unless one of my f entomology friends decides that they really like using a microscope and asks me to drop off the equipment at their house so they can do it. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, but yeah, have a great day, guys. There's a parting dragonfly face for you.